Hi, welcome. Today, I've got two of these. I think they are... Hmm, Oops, 8 by 10. Sorry. I knocked off my butane lighter or my refill can. I am going to do a set of these. I did the resin feathers, and I'm going to try to do it again today with um, cotton thread. This is uh, kitchen twine. And funny, no charge. I went everywhere in my small town area and nobody had a ball of kitchen twine. Now I know I have a ball somewhere because I used it I used it in my kitchen, but I couldn't find it. So I finally ended up going to the supermarket when I was getting groceries and I asked them if they have balls of kitchen twine for sale. And the meat market guy said, I'll help you. And he just cut me off about six feet. <laughs> and that, that was really nice of him. So he just gave it to me. And the checkout lady, had a, she had a good chuckle over that too. But anyways, I've got three colors here. And I'm sorry it's off center, but I want you to see what I'm doing here. Because this is where I'm going to do the, the dipping. I've got Coffee Bean Brown from Color Cottage, and I've got Honey Gold Shimmer, and I've got Autumn Gold. You can see the difference. One is more orange than the other, but they're, they're absolutely stunning. But I was looking at my Coffee Bean Brown, and I'm thinking it's going to disappear on this black background. So I'm going to take a little scoop of the honey gold. Did you guys know you can mix your micas? Just going to take a little scoop and see if I can lighten it up a little bit. Hopefully I didn't make a mistake. You could add ink to this as well, but I... I want to keep my shimmer because what I'm, what my mind wants to do is to do a golden eagle feather and then paint on it after it's cured, like a little scene of like a loon or a, you know, little water scene okay that lightened it up a tidge but you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna try hopefully I don't screw it up but I've got extra resin so I better shake this I've got a luma light where is it Trying to look through the camera. Alum light white opaque dye. I don't know if you're supposed to shake it or not. I just do. Just to make sure. And I want just a like that much. And I better wipe that off. Hang on. It contaminated the tip. And I don't want that in there. All right. Let's see if this lightens it. Maybe a bit more. Let's try a little bit more. Woo. Hopefully that's not too much. I 
now it's kind of muted, but I, I knew that's what would happen with that white. But I think it'll look okay. I think it'll be good. Well, we'll see. If it not, if I don't like it, I can scrape it off before it cures. Or we can just go with it. And put a layer of black resin on it. Which is what I did here. Because this was, these two boards were tests. And I did feathers on them. And I was like, okay, that worked. And I did it with a chain and a piece of yarn because I couldn't find my kitchen twine. Oh, and by the way, after I brought this kitchen twine home in this little, this little tray, it was so funny. I was in my jewelry room picking out stones for my next, um, well, it's actually, I'm doing it right now, for my seven... Tree of Life pendants. I was trying to do one a week, which I have to do another one today so I can post it tomorrow. But anyway, that's beside the point. Um, silicone mat ready. What was I talking about? Oh, so anyways, I think I was talking about two different things. I got... I poured black resin over it using aluminite black dye. Let it cure, and now it's all set to go. So I have uh, some new I scuffed it up only for the reason that I'm sure I was trying to get rid of the glare and the reflection of my canopy because I have a plastic canvas hanging over my cutting table here slash craft table and Scuffing it didn't work. You don't have to scuff between layers. Resin. I learned this. Oh, I don't know. Mm, a few months ago. I, anyways, I learned this, that epoxy resin is designed to adhere to itself. So you don't have to scuff. So you can eliminate that step. Now, if you want us to, if you want to scuff, go right ahead. That's your prerogative. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying you don't have to. All right, now I'm going to layer a really thin coat. I don't, I don't measure it, but this time I did so that you guys will know how much I put on. So I'm starting out with one teaspoon just to see if that'll work. It might be too much because I don't recall putting this much on before. So I'm trying to scrape out all that I can so that we'll see what one teaspoon does. But you want a very thin coat. You All you're doing is eliminating the resist when you drag the feather or the rope. So I'm just going to and I, this doesn't have to be all over the board. This is just going to be where you're going to put your feather. But I want a real thin coat. So that covered about two-thirds, maybe three-fourths. Let me wipe off my finger. And I just want to get rid of the bubbles really quick. Because I don't want I don't want any extra bubbles that I can if I can avoid them. Alright, so now I'm going to pour. This didn't mix. I got some white here. Right there. Let me stir this a little bit more. Just so. These are cute little cups. I got them in a kit um, off of Amazon. If I remember, I will get a link. But it's got one of these in it. 
of four of these little tiny things, two 100 millimeter, milliliter cups and three 250 milliliter cups. And I really wanted the milliliter cups and the tiny ones. I've got plenty of the 100 milliliters, but that's fine. It all is good. I'll use them all. So I'm going to dip or pour some of this. I would say this is about an inch and a half. And I hope that this And now I want most of my feather to be this autumn gold. This is a gorgeous. I love Color Cottage. Um, not an affiliate. I don't know if she does that. And to be honest, I don't have many. My, I've got the Pearlex stuff because they were cheap when, you bought them, when I bought them off of Amazon. And I know also that this is not, this is not uh, what an eagle feather looks like. I know that. So you don't have to correct me. This is my artist's interpretation of an eagle feather. Because I can. All right, let's see what this cotton one does. Sorry, pardon my arm. Let's see. We'll put it. Oh, you know what? I don't. That's a little too short. Um, now I might have too much on there. And I've got a cat hair on my... So I'm just going to try to hold this down. Oh, oh I'm making a mess. Pay attention. Dum. I don't like that. I use my palette knife. And don't worry about that. I can clean that up. Lay this back in. I'll we'll do this again. Do the other side. Boy, I'm not doing very good today. All right, I'm just going to throw that right there. Wipe off my fingers. And where's my... Got my porcupine quill all ready to go. And I'm going to... Break that off. And I'll see if I can fix that point. Oh, you know, God bless it. I do that all the time. There's another step to these things. And I forget. So we got to draw the... What is this, a quill? Uh, no. 
I can't remember what it's called. So now I want to create some. Oh, my. Little hairs because the bottom of a feather has got little wild hairs. Now I got, oh. Okay. I want to create some. I want to create a separation right there. And let's see if I can do this. There seems to want to be a separation right there. I need a steadier hand today. I haven't got it. Good thing about resin, or another good thing about resin, you can manipulate it to an extent. I'm getting some cells and I don't know why I don't like that. Okay. Take that out. I want to smooth that line. That. I still got to try to get rid of that. Okay, I think that's ready to cure. Well, I better torch it really quick. Get rid of the bubbles. We'll do one more. Just need to wipe it off. I did not scuff this one up. Wiping it, just getting it clean of the dust that's down here in my basement. And I'll set that over here just to let that cure off camera. And we'll do this one. Add a little bit more.
And then we'll add the honey gold. And now let's see, let's do, let's just make it hard on myself. <laughs> oh, can't do that. Forgot the, I forgot to add the base. That would have been horrible. Teaspoon, I've got extra resin left. It mixed up uh, 40 milliliters. And I have extra. So if you want to do this, make a, a make a big project of lots of feathers. Let's see. This spread out. I buff my finger, quick torch. Let's see if I can drag it the other way. And I have a drip. Somewhat. It looks better than the last one I did anyway. Okay, now the other side. Let's get it down to where we need it. And then I'm going to dip the tip in just to get a little extra resin there. Drag it through. Okay, we're done with that. Back to the quill. Actually, it's kind of awkward trying to work around this uh, camera. All right. Make the hairs. You want them to go all different directions. You see that I had a, a cat hair in there. Don't have enough lines in this. It looks too solid. So I'm just creating feather lines, hoping that it will 
change the mica shift. Oh. What do you guys think? Oh, I just added a... Ugh. Okay. A little more. Want some big fat feathery. Quick torch and we will let these cure. And it doesn't matter. Um what was I going to say? It doesn't matter if this is rough because when we put the next layer of resin on, it's going to all self-level and bring it nice and smooth and flat to the top. So now I will just babysit these for a few, maybe 45 minutes until I know for sure that things are not going to change anymore. I don't want holes. Maybe I should just leave these as is um, because it's mica and that might add to the appeal, but I don't want them. So I'm just going to watch these for a while until I know for sure they're ready and set and they're not going to do that anymore. And we will see you back in a second after they're cured. And I will show you how I will paint, which I've never done before. I will paint on a loon on one. We'll see. <laughs> All right. We'll see you in a sec. Bye. Okay, guys, this is how it turned out, and I'm not happy. So we're going to try something different now. I took some Mod Podge. This is super gloss, but I'm going to assume that any Mod Podge will work. And I put them in my little cups here. This is Coffee Bean Brown by Color Cottage. Soft Gold by Color Cottage and autumn gold by color cottage and i have a little bit of pearl x white pearl um but i put this in a paint base not um mod podge so i think that this might not work but we'll try it maybe so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to define this a little better. So hopefully, and I apologize for the glare. Let me turn the light off and see if that helps. Oh, I ran into a box. Is it too dark? We'll try it. Might be too dark. Let me try one more thing. There. That's a little better. There's still a kind of a glare. Or actually, that's a reflection of the plastic canopy. So, um, I'm going to try to do this behind the camera. 
And I think the first thing I want to do is use uh, just an old fan brush. And I'm going to dip it in the autumn gold. Now, let's see. Now, I'm too close to the camera because I wanted to sh I wanted to make sure that you guys could see. I'm going to go right into that spine and just drag it Let me get some paint on all of the edges here. Oof. It looks kind of like I'm making a mess, but it always does. when you do your first application of any kind of painting. So I'll let that side dry. And we'll come over here and do this side. Get some more paint on my brush. See if I can't make a bigger mess here. Well, I'm going to say it looks better than it did. Wipe this brush off. I think I want to try a rake on the coffee bean brown. We'll see how that works. This is a rake brush. It's got um, little sections cut out of it. I'm going to drag that over that bit a little bit. And the nice thing about this Mod Podge so far, whoops, sorry, did not mean to bump the camera. I'm too close. But I'm trying to give you guys a close up of this. To create the strokes so that it goes in line with the feather. Anyways, what I was going to say was the, the good thing about this Mod Podge is if you get it in a spot that you don't like and if it's wet, you can just wipe it off with your thumb or a, a Q-tip or something. But if it's dry, you can go in with just some water and a, a Q-tip or one of those uh, tools that I showed you in another video. I think what they are is for working on uh, your makeup. 
Sorry, I had to take a drink of coffee. All right, so I'm gonna let that dry. And uh, we'll add some little details of the, I apologize. I'm trying to look behind the camera instead of looking right at the camera or looking right at the piece. But I kind of lost my little hairy feathers here. And I don't know if you guys, if everyone is the same, but there are days when I don't feel artistic and I know that I shouldn't try to do anything. <laughs> but there are times when I'm in my, in that, that mood where I can't paint or actually I can't do anything right. Everything just screws up. But you have, in my case, I don't know if anybody else notices this or not, but in my, sorry, in my case, I have to work through it. I have to just keep plugging away. I'm adding this soft gold to the autumn gold to try to add dimension. Oh, sorry. Golly gee, this is this is pretty bad. What do you think so far? It looks, I think it is uh, about 50% better than it looked before. And let's put a little soft gold up here at the top, right next to that coffee bean brown. Now, when you're painting with this mica powder and Mod Podge, it's kind of transparent. So you'll have to um, Oh, what was I going to say? You'll have to uh, do more than one layer. You know, it's really sad when your mind goes. And again, this is an, a golden eagle feather. <laughs> yeah. My interpretation, or my, what do you call it, my, my take.
I'm going to give this a little more beef here. And I think I want some shimmer right in through here. Okay, I'm going to let this dry and come back and I'll do the, um, the spine. And this is too one-dimensional. So I'm going to come in now with some antique gold. Okay, now I'm going to come back and put just a little bit of the soft gold on top if I can without, because this isn't dry, but I want to try to blend it. Just little highlight. And I'm not going by any picture because this isn't the true color. Now maybe I did too much. So now I'll come back in with that coffee bean brown. Let's add, see if I can, well, eh. let me use the rake, see if I can do that. Just add some little wisps of coffee bean. Sorry. I have to turn it over. I can't get my hand in there where I want. Okay, what do you think? Too bright? <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. I'm going to let this dry uh, good enough. So I'll be back in about maybe half hour to test it. And see if I can do the spine. So, be back in a sec. Okay, I'm back. I just took a Posca pen 
is it actually no this is a nail art pen fine black it is by sally hansen and i just drew a, an edge now with my posca pen i'm going to i'm going to try to do the other side i'm not real good at posca pens so we're going to see what happens here not not working so well I, I don't know if there's something wrong with my pen or if this is what it's supposed to look like but it's not there's n hardly any pigment in here Sorry, I'm not talking. I'm really focusing because I can't draw a straight line to save my life. Okay, now I've got a gold Posca pen. I don't know if it's going to match the gold or not. Or maybe I have a Posca pen. I can't get the paint to come down. There we go. I don't want to cover up my black. I just kind of want to blend the white and the gold right up to the black. See, that looks okay. And I apologize if you're too far away. I had to move it. I had to move the camera back because it was just too close. quite sure how to use these Posca pens because they are not working like I um, expect a, a paint marker to work. So I may have to come in with a, a fine tip white. We'll let that dry. And I'm going to get the second one that I was working on. And we're going to do the same thing. Come in right about here. That Mod Podge is thick there.
It's still tacky. Oh, sorry, I was off camera. Let me do it again because I screwed it up. See what I mean by today, some days you just can't seem to get it going. Okay, I can't get in the flow. And I feel like my insides are shaking, so my hand's going to start shaking pretty soon. No, I don't like this white Posca pen for this application. I'm going to put that away for now. I'll try the gold again. And this paint is taking up the Mod Podge. Oh, where's my tool? My tool, my tool. Let's see if I can get it off with this. Maybe I need to let this dry more. What do you think? Dry a little bit. I don't know. I've never used Pasca pens before, so I can't can't teach you anything except to see what I'm doing wrong. <laughs> I didn't mean that. Does sound like, you know. Oh well. It's the truth. So anyway, what I will do here. I got to figure our something out. Um, what I'll do after I get it painted, I will put another coat of resin on it. And then once that's cured, I'll be back to show you what I'm going to do next. Hi guys, we're back. I'm so excited. All right, let's get to this. Um, first, I want to explain. I 
transferred these images uh, by uh, taking a picture that I, I had painted oh several years ago as a gift for my son for Christmas and it was of this loon it was an oil painting and this one is done just needs a coat of resin on top but anyway the second one I just um, put two on there and I anyways I gotta get back to the story because I I'm getting ahead of myself here <sighs> see these marks I came down and I uh, transferred the image with graphite paper I just put the graphite paper down, put the picture on where I wanted it, and then I traced along the, around the lines. And when I pulled it off, so you can see where the tape was, I realized it wasn't rock hard, so it hadn't, um, I got, I, look, I got uh, my palm print in there. But anyways, so make sure it's really hard <laughs> before you actually do your transfer. I got in a hurry. So I've just laid in some black background and I'm going to continue on because I need to have the reflection in the bottom of the water here. So I'm just going to kind of loosely paint in the reflection and the, it's really cool on the resin because if you make a mistake you can wipe it off really fast and it doesn't um, affect it so I'm just going to loosely block this in I'm not going to um, worry about having it solid because I'm going to paint white over it and in actuality you don't want it to be uh, because water if, if the water is moving your image is going to be distorted anyway so I'm just painting in okay so that takes care of that And now I'm going to go back in um, oh, here one sec I'm going to take white paint it's titanium white so that it's more is opaque and I'm going to oh let's see The lines come around his neck, really tiny. And if you make your line too wide this way, it's all right because you can come back with black. And now, right about here. Here is the white crest, and I'm just going to fill it in white because we'll come back with black. So like that we will let that dry filling that in need more white paint Ooh. I'm going to put some over here just to get it off my brush 
and then we're going to do the same thing on this guy's neck. And like I said, see how that's a little too solid for me. So we'll come back with white. Oh, shoot. Don't worry about that. I can fix it. <laughs> I, guess I always fix. I have to fix everything I make anyway. Do you? Do you, does anybody else have that issue? It's. Sometimes I feel like um, I should be able to do this better. We're gonna make this one so that he looks like he's more towards us. And this is my water line right here. We'll get that down. This is um, a transom for aught. It's a really thin point um, brush for detail work. It comes, it came in a set off of Amazon. I don't know how much I spent. I don't want to say because I'll be, I'll be wrong. All right, so now I need to get my water line down here on this one. I think I got that crooked. What do you think so far? I like it. Um, let's see, where's my water? I gotta rinse this out really quick. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the bottom half. So on the bottom half, I use my rake brush. And I just dip it in the paint like that. And I'm just pushing it to get it into the bristles and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just if I can do this behind the camera I'm just going to create oh that was not good go at a slant pick up a little more paint And just lightly, oh, not, not working very well here. I'm too heavy handed, that's what it is. But that's okay, because I can fix that. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to go to the other one. Oop. My paint is drying out because I spent so much time on the other one that it's uh, just sitting here on my silicone mat. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I hit the camera with my paintbrush. Okay, 
going to wash that out. And now, let's see, where's my other paintbrush? I'm going to use... It's a... Uh, angled brush, and it's a number zero. But can you see that point? It's just an angle. So I'm going to dip it in my paint, just, just the tip. Well, it's a little more than what I wanted, but that's okay. Now I'm just going to take the, so that the point is up, and I'm going to just accent my lines so I can get a little more definition. And now I'm going to flip it and go the other direction. Make a, we'll make a solid line here. I don't like that right there, so I'm going to... I'm just, it's not, I'm trying to be random here. You don't want it to have a, a pattern of any sort. Or any um, balls on the end, like here, I'll, I'll make one. You don't want that. So what I'll do is, I'll just, since there's a lot of paint there, I'll just drag it out. And smooth it. So, there's that. And now I painted over these uh, leaves, which is what I wanted to do anyways. But I'm going to go back now into my black. And get that base in there again. So now you can, so now it looks like, oh that's cool. Now it looks like. Um, it's sitting here in front of the bird. Just brought, I just brought, I just moved the bird back and brought that forward. All right, now I need to put on a little bit more white on this one loon. It's dry now so I can add another layer. And drag drag some feathers. Like that. And need to, I got to turn it, that was awkward for my hand. Need to put some here. All right. Now we're going to come back into do the black and repair. Hopefully. Come on. 
I need to get a really fine line there. Work upside down here. So I can pull into that dry a little bit and I'm gonna take some French wine to be just because it's the color I want for the eye and I hope I can dot these in the right spot and I'm just going to put let's see right here just a circle and then this one will be right there French wine so rinse that out we're done with that we'll let that dry and I'm going to take my angle brush again, my, my zero angle brush, and I'm going to put some more white on that, hopefully, if I don't screw it up. Because it's not bright enough for me. So just... We're having a Bob Ross moment. A few hairs and some air. And I don't like that white there on that chest. It's not solid enough for me. Oh, my paint is getting crusty. My white titanium paint that I'm using is Montmartre Studi Studio Acrylics. It's just a cheap white house, or not house paint. It's just a cheap white paint. And now I notice that my body is disconnected there. So we're going to wipe the white out. Go in with black. And we're just going to touch that up. What are we doing here? There we go. Need a good chisel edge here. And I pushed it backwards, so now my point is gone. There we go. Now we can um, fill in some more black here. Get that a nice solid, a nice solid black. Careful not to touch your eye. I should have done this before, but. That's alright, I can fix that. 
and now we need to come up here and touch up this guy's head, top of his head. It's a little too transparent, so we want to make sure that that's nice and black. This is the papa and the mama. They don't have any babies yet. I could paint some on, but I don't want to. This is going to be long enough as it is. All right. So now we're going to do the specs. Oh, actually, you know what? We have to, we have to bring this up. Just brushing lightly, pulling so that the point of the, the brush is just touching. There, that looks good. Okay, now I'll rinse that out. And now we're going to go in and we're going to do the spots. Oy, these are going to be hard. Just want a little paint on, and we're going to start at the top. Great. How many lines we're going to need? And I have a little fleck there. And now we have to, to kind of... Angle it so that it looks like the body is round and that didn't work. So we'll try that again. I got something on my brush. Hang on. Right now, um, we got to do the other side. Get a little bit of paint in, and we're going to create the... Top lines. You don't have to be really particular about these because you aren't going to be 10 inches away from this. Looking at it, it's going to be hanging on your wall. Okay, we're nearly done with the loons. I do notice, though, that um, I don't like that bump right there, so I'm going to come in with my black, and I'm just going to touch it so that it makes it look more uh, 
more like a line. And I see my beak has got a funny point. Now I'm going to come in and I'm going to put a little dot in the middle because that red is dry enough it's going to skin on it. Make a little pupil. Okay. I'm going to rinse this out. Let that dry. I'm going to work on my my greenery. What are those called? My mind it wants to say lily pads and I know that's not what they are. I'll, I'll think of it after I'm done with the video. Oh, I've lost my angle brush. Oh, here it is. Okay. I've got a crafter's choice. It's a really cheap thing I got at Walmart. Uh, this is a 3 8 inch angle brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take first I'm going to just take some hooker's green this is grumbacher paint you can use any green you want as long as you start out with a dark first and I'm going to pull that point to create a green over this black and you aren't going to see it right away because uh, it's a transparent So there's that one and now we got to come over here and pull that I got when that one got a little bit away from me, but that's okay. I can fix that. I'm coming back here now, adding more green. See when you put a black in first or a dark brown, whatever color you want, it doesn't matter. Um, you're creating a depth. And um, no, I have didn't go to school for art. I just learned this uh, just by playing because I love to paint. Uh, do I have talent? I don't know. I think I have talent. Am I a Rembrandt? No. I just like to paint. And we just, if you do what you love, you're not really working, right? All right, now I'm washing out my brush. And I'm going to now take, um, it's a, it's Grumbacher again. It is cadmium medium yellow. And I'm just going to dip it in the tip. Like that. And I'm going to dip the back side of the brush in Hunt Hooker's Green. And now I'm going to mix it. I'm going to dip it again because I want to get a nice good amount of paint in there. In the bristles. All right, now I'm going to pull just a few. Just like that. A little 
load up my brush again. I'm almost out of hooker's green there on my palette. Or on my silicone mat, actually. Pretty? Nice and loaded. I drag it right up over the top. And now I'm just going to go in just hooker's green. Let that uh, medium yellow mix. And... Uh, Make a couple of these darker because I didn't want, I don't want that too bright. We're almost done, guys. I rinse that brush out. Now we're going to highlight the loons. And I'm going to take my uh, 4 very fine point. You could do this with a uh, any kind of really fine point brush and I'm gonna go in the white and we're gonna put I'm wiping some of that off a highlight on the beak you don't want to go in thick oh resin was stuck to my finger. Now, see that went too much. Ah, oh, come on. See, sometimes it takes more than one try, but that's okay. Just wipe it off, and don't do as I do, <laughs> which is. Lick your finger and wipe it. And then lick your finger again. That's not good. But. Bad habits. Let's see if I can do better on this one. There. Now we're going to put a little highlight on their head. And on the tail. Where's my little squishy thingy? I'm, I'm gonna get a clean one. See if I can't. Do you notice that black stuff? That's the graphite. Try to smooth that out a little bit. We're going to go in with my angle brush again because I just removed his butt. Pretty cool. I like it. I need to touch that up. I don't like that. All right. Rinse that out. And we have one last thing to do. Where is my brush? Here it is. White paint. We're going to put a little reflection on this pupil. 
Oh, too much. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, my. I can fix that. <laughs> there we go. Don't touch it. Can't. There. Now, since I screwed up before, I got to go back in the black. Put black on back on his head where I scratched it off. And some on the other head. We don't want the resin feather to show through. Smooth out that line. I have water on my ferrule. Okay. Put that in the water. Take good care of your brushes, guys. Something I don't do. You see a lot of graphite here where my finger was holding it down, so I want to remove that. Just make sure you get everything cleaned up that you want before your next resin. Okay, what do you think? Is that awesome or is that awesome? I'll show you the other one and uh, I'll put another coat of resin on here just to seal this all up and then these will be for sale on my Facebook page oops knocked over a stack of cups I haven't decided if I'm going to sell them as a set or each I think maybe each isn't that cute I love them <laughs> I'm so excited. I actually got something. Thank you guys for joining me. I really appreciate you spending the time to watch this video all the way through. And for liking and subscribing. Oh my gosh. I woke up this morning. And um, I always check YouTube videos to see who posted overnight. So I can be inspired. And um, I hit a thousand subscribers. Shock. I was surprised. And now, let's see. Um, I think I'll do a giveaway. So, what I'll do is, I'll... Um, Pick something from each category of art that I do so that whoever wins, they can pick whichever one they want. Is that a good idea? Let me know in the comments. I have jewelry. I have acrylic. Uh, I have acrylic paintings. I have um, cups. I have a resin cup that I could get, do as a giveaway. And... Yeah, three things. Acrylic would be part of resin as well. So it would just be a piece of art. So let's hope. I'm pretty sure. I'm I'm 99% I'm confident that this is going to go away once I put another coat of resin on it. But I'm loving that. I made a resin feather. And then I didn't like it. And the reason why... Oh, I was going to tell you guys that. The reason why that it didn't turn out 
was because I left too much resin on, um, on the base. Do you remember when I did it in the very beginning? I put in a teaspoon and I smeared it out. I didn't make it thin enough because once it started curing, it started relaxing because there was too much clear underneath when I did the string pull. So I'll do one again later because I've already done two now. But I'll do one again later and I'll make it as thin and as thin as possible. You just want just enough so that it will uh, eliminate the resistance when you when you drag the, the string. But anyways, thanks again guys. I'm so excited. Ah, makes me happy that you guys like watching. And I really appreciate it. It means so much to me. I just can't tell you how grateful I am. And um, we will see you again in the next video. Bye.